It is the morning of Monday, the 4th of May, and it is the first day of the spring of health. So I have decided to read this as my first fiction book, The Light Keepers by Abby Janai. This is a book about a nature photographer going to an island to do some work, and there's a team there as well of other sort of biologists and uh, she is doing work there and I think something mysterious happens there but I thought that I would start with this one because when I made the TBR this was definitely the one that I got most response for um, from people commenting. Okay so we are still on Monday the 4th and it is the first day of Springathon. I have only been reading from The Light Keepers by Abby Janai today uh, and hopefully I will actually get some more work on this. I'm doing some uh, school work at the moment uh, but I just wanted to say uh, that this is gonna be just a, a small part of this video but just I just wanted to say Thank you to everyone who has been joining in with Springathon. It's been amazing to see the kind of reception that this has gotten. Uh, when I first thought about making a nature writing readathon, I was unsure if there was going to be enough um, excitement about it and I asked for uh, anyone who wanted to co-host with me and Emma very kindly just jumped in and has been amazing in making all of the plans and preparations and things like she has been absolutely amazing to have as a co-host um, and to have Juliana join us with the photo challenge as well I mean both of them are just fantastic at just taking charge of this thing and I'm so grateful for them but yeah as I said I have only been reading The Light Keepers by Abby Jenai today and I'm really loving the beginning of this it reminds me a lot of Waterfalls of Stars by Roseanne Alexander um, in that it is set on an island um, this one is set on an island near California but the uh, the island itself seems a lot like Skomar. There's a lot of like the details and the kind of wildlife as well that you see uh, in this book that is the same uh, in Waterfalls of Stars. The only major difference is the fact that there's sharks in the waters in this and that doesn't feel very um it doesn't feel very european uh so that is the major difference i think uh, so far uh, and of course this is a fiction book and the other one is a non-fiction book the first day of springathon i was mostly reading the light keepers by abby Jenai, and i am now 108 pages into it i uh, really enjoying it it is uh starting to become more mysterious so i'm getting that um I knew that there was a mystery involved in this book, uh, but I've only just gotten to the point where something happens. So I'm intrigued to see where it's going. And I've just finished shark season and started whale season. And I'm, I'm finding that a lot of the time when I'm reading this, I am, I am forgetting the fact that it is not nonfiction. Uh, there's so much information about the animals and everything that I, my mind sort of thinks that it is nonfiction and I, keep stopping myself and think no it isn't a memoir um and I think that is actually something that I am, am enjoying the fact that I'm learning a lot and I'm assuming that the author has done her research and not just put in all of this, this information about nature that isn't true there would be no point in doing that so this has been my main reading so far but I have also been reading a little bit of Mycophilia by Eugenia Bone this is a book all about fungi um and mushrooms so mushrooms is actually a fruiting body of fungi they are not the, the words are not synonymous so i'm already learning so much of uh, reading this book i actually started this in uh, april because i had planned to read it for the owls and i didn't end up uh, getting very far into this so i am now um finally getting to actually picking it up i think the contradictions in them as a um, as a thing is sort of reflected in uh, a lot of humans reactions to them so the fact that they can be absolutely essential for life but also uh, be the spreading of parasites and uh, work as um, or sort of live off other beings so yeah I, 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 as I said I'm learning a lot
today's Wednesday, the third day of the Spinathon, and I decided I finally landed on reading *The Butterfly Isles* by Patrick Barkham uh, as my current main nonfiction for the Spinathon. So this one is all about butterflies, but specifically um, emperors and admirals. I, although I think it covers a few others as well, and it has beautiful f photographs like this. <laughs> um in the middle although i i really wish that nature books all had all had uh photographs and things um in them because i am not familiar with a lot of the um species names and especially not in the english so it's really really helpful to have things like that there's actually a lot of oh my god like this this is all about Patrick Barkham's one specific summer in looking for butterflies. I think he even says in the beginning uh, sort of how many he can see in how many he can spot in one summer. Um, yeah, it is nearly a decade since I set out to finish an uncompleted childhood quest and see all 59 species of British butterfly in one summer. Uh, so this book is that book um, covering uh, that summer. And I just feel like this is the perfect book to read in May. Uh, and as I've said previously, I really associate uh, butterflies with spring, although I haven't seen any yet. Uh, I feel kind of sad about that, the fact that I haven't spotted any. Um, as I said before, that is probably in, in big part because I'm always walking with a dog. So it is Friday evening and I just finished The Life Keepers by Abby Chennai. So I didn't, um, I really enjoyed the book as a whole. I didn't like the ending, but I did like the epilogue. So um, basically I found myself completely transported into the Farallon Islands and I now want to read all things about the Farallon Islands as an as a real location. Um, at the end, she does sort of uh, acknowledgements, and uh, one of the people that she mentions in it is Susan Casey and her book, The Devil's Teeth. Let, let me check that. Um, the Devil's Teeth, uh, which is a book that I have on my to read list um, on Goodreads anyway, because she has written. This one I think is about sharks, but apparently it's just generally about the Farallon Islands as well. Um, and she also has a book about uh, dolphins that I'm really interested in. Uh, so yeah, I definitely want to read more about this location in the form of nonfiction. I found uh, a lot of similarities, as I mentioned before, with this book and Waterfalls of Stars. And there were a few things that reminded me of The Seabird's Cry. Um, in terms of the wildlife on the island and the harshness of that. Like, there's a scene in this one that honestly had me gaping at the book, which it doesn't happen very often. I'm not the kind of person who is um, very expressive on the outside. I, I usually feel things on the inside and don't necessarily show it on the outside. Uh, but I was gaping while I was reading that section towards the end of the book. You will know what I mean uh, if you've read this. But I had one main, one minor qualm about the ending, uh, which I can't really go into. It's to put it very, um, s to put it very simply. Basically, I didn't like the reasoning that one of the characters had about the way that they had changed. Hi everyone, so it is now Sunday evening and I haven't really checked in much this weekend. A lot of my thought processing has been taken up with studying and things like that. Um, and I've also been watching a lot of K-drama. I'm currently watching one with uh, Le Min Hu, uh, which is the Blue Sea something like that. I can't remember the title at the moment. Uh, it is about a mermaid and it is one of the ones that I got. 
um, as a recommendation through Mel from Mel's Book Adventure. If you are thinking of getting into K-dramas, definitely check out her recommendations. But I thought that I would do a last check-in for this first reading vlog uh, for the Springathon, just to sort of share what I've been reading this weekend and um, what I'm looking forward to reading next week. So I have been doing a lot of uh, booktube prize reading as well, which I haven't been, been mentioning here since it doesn't have anything to do with the Springathon, uh, but it has been um, a big part of my reading in general. So I finished uh, Know My Name by Channel Miller, uh, which kind of fits with the Asian readathon because she is part Chinese. Um, so I just finished that and I have only just started Say Nothing which is the next book that I have to read for the nonfiction group A judging for the book two prize. Aside from book two prize reading, I have also been reading The Overstory by Richard Powers this e this weekend. Um, so I am doing a buttery read with uh, Roxy with this one. And I have previously last year, I started reading this and read the entire first section called Roots where you are introduced to quite a lot of people and their family history and they are supposedly interconnected through um, the rest of the book. And then a book that I don't think I mentioned before in this reading blog, although I might have, I can't rem remember exactly, is Miracle in the Andes by Nando Parado. This is a nonfiction book about a rugby team that Nando Parado was part of. I think it is in the 80s. I think it is in the 80s or the 70s, um, in the 70s, uh, that they are flying to, uh, to Chile and their plane crashes in the Andes. So it's about the survival story of the team. Um, and the reason I was really interested in reading this now, now during the Springathon is because the uh, in uh, Wind, Sun and Stars, Antoine de Saint-Esprit talks about one of his comrades um, crashing in the Andes uh, with his uh, flight and um, he talks about that experience and that just sort of really reminded me of this one so I was particularly intrigued to read this now. Uh, so I've only read the introduction and part of the first chapter um, but I'm thinking that I will be reading this as my travel prompt and so far it's, it's very easy to read uh, but I'm guessing it's going to be harrowing. So those are all of the books that I'm currently reading and all this is all this is it for this first reading blog of the Springathon. So uh, let me know if you have been participating in the Springathon so far, what you've been reading, if you've been enjoying what you've been reading. That is all I have today. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a good week and I will talk to you soon.